Amen, amen. We made it to the main event today. You're here at Church 180, right? <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Your Jesus is the true champion, right? So we already know who won, Jesus. We read it in the back of the book. So, so, so grateful that you're here today and so grateful for the game later on today. And I just encourage you to come out and hang out with us. We actually have a, a big screen, 108 screen, 108 inch screen downstairs um, to have the game projected on. And um, we're going to, you know, we'll invite you to bring some food and hang out with us, have a good time. It's going to be great. So um, we'll be here and uh, it's going to be a great, great time. It's an opportunity for fellowship. And uh, even if you don't, not really into football, it's just kind of cool to come and hang out. So um, I encourage you to do that. But hey, you know, we're starting a new series called Messy. Loving others really isn't easy, is it? It's, it's not. <laughs> you know, relationships, they're, 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 they're great, you know, but sometimes they get a little bit, you know, you know, the other day, um, you know how it thought about a week and a half ago or so outside, and, the, and things got a little bit muddy outside, and, uh, and the girls, they want to go out to play, and Gabby, I don't know what it is, but she loves going outside and digging up my yard, you know, and she goes out there, and she's, she's, she's making all these big mud pies and taking all this mud. And, and putting it on the deck, and she's having a great time, you know what I mean? And she's covered with mud, and she comes into the house, into the kitchen, and she's tracking mud. She put on her boots, but she forgot to take them off before she came in, so there's mud all over the place. But you know what? She had fun. She had a lot of fun doing it, you know? That's the thing with, with relationships. They can be, they, they're messy, but so gratifying at the same time, you know? And we have these up these these times, and they can they then in our relationships can be so so rewarding, and we can get so much out of them and develop great relationships, relationships that change our lives, and we get connected to other people. And uh, but at the same time, there there's a dynamic about relationships that that gets tricky sometimes, doesn't it? We've all had those those opportunities, those things in our lives, right? I mean, we invest so much, and we develop these beautiful relationships with, with, with friendships and uh, uh, maybe old schoolmates that, we, that we're still friends with, or maybe it's with our, with our parents, our, our mother that we love so much, or, or our children that we've invested so much, and, and, and we love them to death. And, and even in those relationships, there's times when it gets just a little bit messy, right? You're, thinking, you're all thinking about times when, that, when it got a little bit messy. But what's life without love? What's life without relationship? What is it, you know? God created us for relationship. He created us for relationship with him, and he created us with rela for relationship with other people. But Because, we see, we were created to be connected, to be connected with God and connected to one another. That's why it's so important for us to come together on Sundays and connect as a body of believers together as we worship God and we connect with him. That's why it's so important for us to, to come to connect groups, prayer and the, and the faith foundations, even FPU, and to take those opportunities and even the Super Bowl party tonight, and take those opportunities opportunities to connect with one another and build those relationships because we are created to be connected. But unfortunately, in our relationships, sometimes things get a little bit messy. Sometimes words were said that you wish you didn't say or you did something that you really didn't mean to do and somebody's feelings got hurt. And some of us can right now can think of relationships where, where they were good at one time and this one thing happened. And it messed it all up. <laughs> and now things just aren't the same. You see, each, inside of each one of us, we're hardwired for what God puts a, God puts a high priority on, is relationships. We're hardwired inside of us for a relationship with him. God puts a high priority on relationships and walking in love. And today, what I, as we start this series, I want to read to you the scripture from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 36, and, and look at God's priorities for us. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert of the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment? I mean, they had commandments left and right that they had to keep to be able to be clean and cleansed religiously and to, to be approved by the religious leaders, to be approved by God. But, but here they are asking Jesus. They, see, they're always trying to get Jesus to stumble. They're always trying to get him to mess up and catch him in, and, and catch him in some, kind of, um, some kind of mistake. So they, they went to him and they asked this question. 
Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? They're thinking, is it not murder? Is it not, not steal? Is it to, 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 to not cheat on your wife? And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first greatest commandment, so we put God first. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So God's basically saying, love God and love people. Love God. That's what, that if you break down all of, the, all of the law that God gave, you can break it down and boil it down to these two points. It's to, to love God and to love people. Outside of relationship with him, he prioritizes other people. You see, we need each other. So much value is, is added to our lives when we are connected to other people. When we build relationships, when we invest in relationships, when we, when we invest in others, when we step out of our comfort zone to, to be friends with somebody, when we, when, we, when we invest in our children, when we invest in our wife, when we invest in that friendship or invest in our brothers and sisters here at Church 180, so much value is added to our life because of the relationships that we have, because we need each other. You see, we live in America, and we, and we, and we value being independent. We love doing things on our own. We, 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 we think that it's a, a, a value, that it's a, a, a thing that we should, that, that is great, is being independent. But it's distinctly not a Christian thing. To a certain extent, it's good. See, we can't have a personal relationship we can have a personal relationship with God, but we can't live our spiritual walk alone. It's important for us to have a shared relationship with him, to have our own personal relationship, but to have others that we can have that relationship with within the context of the body of Christ. I mean, we drive to work alone, we work out alone, we watch TV alone, we pray alone, we, we shop alone, we cry alone. And the, the Bible says that it's not good for a man to be alone. We need others. We need others that can speak into our lives, others that can, that can encourage us, others that, we can, that, we can, that we, can, we can observe their life and how they're being victorious and how we can learn from them. Because we are created to be connected. But something maybe in our lives, somewhere down the road, may have severed that connection. Things may have gotten a little bit messy in a relationship, and now you just feel that disconnection, and it's like things just aren't the way that they're supposed to be. They aren't the way that they used to be. Maybe somebody let you down. They, they told you something, and, they, and, they, and they, they let you down, and they didn't keep their word. Or, or maybe it's a, that they hurt your feelings. They said something that just, that just totally offended you, and now your feelings are hurt, and things are getting messy, and you can't even have a good conversation with them anymore. Maybe somebody was inconsiderate to you. Maybe someone betrayed you. Or maybe you are that person to somebody else. Because you see, when we give, things get messy, we often point the finger at somebody else, right? You see, it's easier for us to give grace to ourselves than it is to give grace to other people. When we're driving down the road and, and we cut in front of somebody else, when, when we, we, we pull out and we're in a hurry, we got to get to we got to get to that appointment that we got to get to, and it's only fifteen minutes away, and then we're we're in a rush, and we pull out in front of somebody, and we're like I mean, we don't really think too much about it. Well, they understand I'm in a rush, and, and you know, and, and it's okay. But if that same person pulled out in front of you and cut you off, you'd be like, oh my goodness, can you believe what they just did to me? It's so much easier for us to give grace for our, to ourselves than it is to other people. And in the context of relationships, we often zoom in on other people, what they did to me, instead of taking responsibility for what maybe I have done. And we're a lot of times a little bit more hesitant to admit that we're often the offender. Quite honestly, maybe we play the role as a victim. That's why we hear messages over and over again in churches about, about forgiving, offering forgiveness, and even, and even forgiving other people that hurt us. 
But it's so much rare for us to talk about owning up to our own offenses and how to deal with those. You have to say, it's somebody else's fault. It's, be, it's because of what they said. It's because of what they did that I feel this way and that this is happening in this relationship. That this relationship got messy because of the words that they spoke, the, the thing that they did. But what do you do when you've hurt someone? Right? Many times we get so hurt because of something that somebody else did. But do we put our feet in somebody else's shoes? And what do I do when I've hurt someone? So Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, he, he started teaching about some, some things. And he said, you heard it said, don't murder, do not hate. And he began to, to, to talk about these things. These, um, th- these things, these teachings on the Sermon on the Mount. And he said this in the context of relationships and how important relationships are to all of us. See, God puts a high priority and a high value on our relationships with other people. God does not want us to, 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 to live in bitterness, not doesn't want us to live in resent- resentment. And he says this, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, And there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in the front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. It says go. This verb tense in this word, it it suggests an an intense effort. God's actually saying, Jesus is actually putting a priority over worship here. Go first and make things right with your brother and sister. Go over here, and and if there's something that's happened over here, go over there and take care of it before you come to the altar in worship. Leave your gift there and go and restore that relationship. And maybe today, right now, as you hear this message, and, and, and I'm going into it pretty quickly here. We don't have too much time. But you're thinking of a relationship that may have gotten messy in your life. It's like it was so good and it was so beneficial to both of you. And then things just got messy. And now you can't even look at each other in the eyes. Crickets in here. We've all been there, right? The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. It's our duty as believers, it's our duty as as followers of Jesus Christ to be peacemakers. It doesn't say here for us to be peacekeepers. He tells us specifically to be peacemakers. And there's a difference. There's nothing wrong with being a peacekeeper. That's great. But we we need to learn the value of being a peacemaker. Because, see, a peacekeeper will often do whatever it takes to keep the other person happy. A a peacekeeper will will just kind of appease the other person. But a peacemaker will confront the issue, even if it makes things uncomfortable, even if it's it's something that, that, that makes both of you very, very uncomfortable and creates a little bit of conflict to make things better. And I'll talk real quickly here about peacekeepers. You're taking notes. Peacekeepers often avoid confrontation to keep peace. They want to avoid confrontation, and it's not bad to be a peace a peacekeeper. It's worse to be a troublemaker. But he says, "Hey, just don't be a peacekeeper. Be a be a peacemaker." On top of that, seek peace in your relationship. Seek wholeness. Seek seek peace in your relationship with other people. If there's an offense against somebody else, let's go take care of it. Let's find forgiveness. Let's find reconciliation. Because there's so many times uh, we, the, we, we see that messiness happen in our relationship and we, and we just kind of avoid it and we put it over to the side and it begins to brew and stir and it gets worse and worse and worse. And we know deep down inside that that relationship's not where it's supposed to be. We don't like to fight. We don't like to argue. We don't, we don't even like to, to just talk like adults and face the, the problems and the issues. We don't, we don't like that. It makes us feel uncomfortable. So we just like to be peacekeepers. Then we have peacemaker, peacekeepers embrace confrontation to make peace. Another thought. Peacemakers embrace confrontation to make peace. 
Jesus said, go. He said, go, before you offer your gift, go initiate, try, make an effort to make peace in that relationship. When there's an offense that maybe you have committed against somebody else, or even if they, if you feel like they have done something to wrong you, go to them and make peace. And, 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 go, and even, if it, even if you feel like you didn't do anything wrong, I'm sure there's some way that we have contributed to that situation. Let's be peacemakers and be willing to endure and embrace confrontation if that's what it takes to make peace. So I'll talk about, quickly before we get into the word a little bit more, friends and enemies of peacemaking. The greatest enemy of peacemaking is pride. Don't elbow the person next to you and say, hey, you listening? (laughs) Because we've always got someone else on our mind when we're thinking about that. We've always got somebody on our mind. I believe that God brought you here today, so he's got a word for you. Also, the greatest friend of the peacemaking is it's humility. Proverbs 11.2 says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. See, with pride, you show me any relationship with tension, I'll show you one where generally two people are struggling with pride. A relationship that is continuously has tension, you can narrow it down to people struggling with pride, people who are not willing to humble themselves. And when things get messy, when those relationships get messy, sometimes the the fix that we have, the way way out of that situation is to to, to humble ourselves and, and, and take the high road and say, you know what, forgive me for my part in this. But oftentimes we, we think that we, we are right and are justified in, in us being offended. And we say, you know what? I'm not going to apologize. They're the one that did wrong. And the pride in our life it keeps us from having a healthy, vibrant relationship with somebody who we loved very much before in the past. And we had a healthy relationship, a good friendship. See, I don't care if the other person is this massive this massive jerk on steroids. I believe that every single one of us, we feel like we're offended. They did something very bad to us. We can find something. We can find something in our own life where we can approach that situation in humility. Say, you know what? I'm going to apologize for my part of this. I'm I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to do my part in restoring this relationship. Because you know what? You're not responsible for the other person. You're responsible for you. You're responsible for how you stand before God. You're not responsible for them, but you're responsible for how you handle the situation. Pride says no. Humility says, you know what? I love the person more than I love being right. You know, it's crazy, and the odds are are totally insane, but as a pastor, it always seems like I talk to the innocent side. You know what? I sit down, and it's always somebody else's fault, and I think it's crazy that the odds are, are so great, but I always end up talking to the person that it's always right. <laughs> but why do we always face the innocent ones? Do you ever notice that? It's because it's so hard to see our own pride and our own sin in the mirror. And we have so much more grace for ourselves than we do for other people. Amen? And here's what happens when we humble ourselves, that we elevate our relationship with the other person above ourselves. And even if you feel like you're right, what you do is is you say, I love this person more than I love being right. Oftentimes, we value being right so much that, we, that it, it keeps us from making amends with other people, and it actually many times destroys our relationship. I think it's a good place to say amen. So I want to talk about real quickly here how to apologize with integrity. You know, when things get messy, and I believe this is something that we all need to learn in our own lives, and something that we need to really be be a master. We need to master in our lives and restoring broken relationships with other people, because to amend relationships and to amend those relationships that may have gotten messy, there's got to be a way to fix it. There's got to be a way to to make it right. 
And it's humbling ourselves. And I want to talk about the right way and the wrong way to apologize to somebody. Very practical today as we start this message series. You know, the wrong way to, to apologize is, hey, sorry I hurt your feelings. <laughs> sorry you feel that way. See, the first way that we've got to apologize is first to admit our specific actions and attitudes. Maybe we've got to say, hey, you know what? I shouldn't have raised my voice. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have been more considerate to you. Maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't have assumed. Maybe I, I overstepped my boundaries. Uh, forgive me for that. Sorry I didn't call. Sorry I didn't keep the promise that I made. Sorry I ignored your feelings. Secondly, we don't make excuses. You know that person that has an excuse for everything, right? <laughs> We take personal responsibility. Don't be that guy that makes, respons- that, that makes excuses for everything. I know I spent that money because, or I, we went over budget this week because you didn't do that, or I, or I did this because you did that. Thirdly, we've got to accept the consequences. We've got to accept the consequences for our actions. We've got to realize that once we offend somebody, when things get a little bit messy, there are some consequences that happen. We gossip, maybe we're going to be a harder person to trust. Maybe you broke your word, it's going to be hard to establish integrity again. Maybe you had an affair, it's going to take some, some, some work for your marriage to, to, get, to be healthy again. Fourthly, we need to change our behavior. Don't yell then apologize and yell again. <laughs> don't curse at somebody and then, then you go around and do the same thing all over again. And, uh, and don't say, sorry, I haven't, honey, I haven't, been, I haven't been home too much. And then go back out and go on vacation again. We need to change our behavior when we, when we want to mend relationships, when we want to, to, to eliminate the mess in our relationships. We need to be people of integrity and mean what we say. And be held accountable for what we for for who we are in in our relationship. That's why it's so important to get around other Christians, to get involved in a connect group, to to be to build relationships within the body of Christ. Where we have people who can pray for you to encourage you. People that you can even model model yourself. Where younger people can model their marriage after people who are who are successfully married. And get counsel and wisdom. People who are here to ask you how you're doing. See, these are powerful words in the heart of the gospel. There's these words. Please forgive me. Which leads me to, fifthly, ask for forgiveness. This is the beginning of cleaning up the mess. This is the part of walking in love that's not so easy. Loving others, sometimes it's great. But it can get messy. We find ourselves in a place where the, our relationships get messy. We've got to be willing to say, please forgive me. I'm sorry. This is what restores broken relationships. This is where it begins, is having the humility, laying down our pride, and saying, please forgive me. I'm sorry. You know, I heard a doctor say, I read this one time, a doctor was saying that oftentimes when, they, when a person breaks a bone in their body, when they put a cast on the bone, after they mend the bone and it begins to heal, the place that began to heal, that place where the bone mended, where it was once broken, becomes the strongest part of that bone at that time. like our relationships. If we're willing to lay down our pride and do what it takes to mend that relationship again, because you know what? Relationships are totally worth it. It's, an, it's, it's, it's worth the, the risk of possibly being hurt. It's, it's worth the risk of, of the time that we, that we invest in them. It, it's worth the risk of, of trying to mend that relationship because you know what? When we find healing and when it mends, that relationship becomes stronger because you're able to work through and receive healing in your relationship. And we're going to close there today with this verse in Matthew 5, 23. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Let's pray.
Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, as we start this series out, Lord, we're just thankful for the relationships that you've given us. First and foremost, we're, we're thankful for the relationship that we have for you and for the people that you put in our lives. Today, Lord, there may be relationships in our lives. There may be some, some relationships today where it, it's just not easy loving other people. It, it's gotten just a little bit messy. And today you're speaking to us, Lord. You're showing us today. Lord, today maybe there's some people here that need to lay down their pride. Maybe there's some people here that need to humble themselves to make things right. And today, Lord, there's some people here who aren't willing to leave here the same. They're not willing to, to stay in their bitterness. They're not, they're not willing to stay here in their unforgiveness. They're just not willing to stay here unless you move in their life today. And today, Lord, as a church, we, we lay down our lives. And Lord, we say, Lord, forgive us, help us to take initiative in, in restoring broken relationships, Lord. When things get messy, Lord, help us to bring that healing, that deliverance, that restoration into that, into that relationship, Lord, so that, Lord, it would be stronger than ever. Maybe it's our marriage today, Lord. We need to clean up the messiness. Maybe it's a, a relationship between friends. Maybe it's a relationship here in the church. And today, as Mike leads us in worship, I want to ask you today, is there a relationship where loving other people just is not easy? Are you willing today to say, Lord, help me. Help me to love other people the way that you love people. Give me the strength today to love people with your love. Lord, today I'm going to do whatever it takes to make things right. And if that's you, I want you to raise your hand today. Lord, I need your help in that. I need your help. I need your help. Yes, 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 yes. As Mike begins to sing today, what I want you to do, I want you to take a step of faith today. The Bible says to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Then he says the greatest second, the greatest commandment after this is to love your neighbor as yourself. This is important. Your relationships with other people are important. They're second to, to your relationship to God. And if that's you, you truly want to make a change. You want God to help you in your relationship with other people. I want you to be as bold and step out in faith and come down here and pray and worship the Lord around this altar. So let's stand. And as we stand, why don't you come forward? Why don't you come forward? Come on. Lord, I'm serious about this. Lord, I'm serious about this. Lord, I'm serious about this. Maybe it's your relationship with God. You say, God, I'm, I'm coming here this morning because I'm going to restore my relationship with you. Lord, I feel far from you. Draw me close. Forgive me of my sin today. I take that initiative. I'm making things right today. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. Maybe you're here today and right now you're feeling distant. You're feeling far from God. And I want to give you an opportunity to make things right with him. You've been here when God's been dealing with you. And today you'll say, God, you know what? I, I, I've, been, I've been going the opposite direction. I've been running away from you. And today, Lord, I, I, I want to come home. I want to, I want to come into your embrace. And I want to tell you today that he's standing here with arms open wide, 
ready to receive you, ready to give you a great big hug and welcome you. And if that's you today, if that's you today, you say, God, I want to recommit my life to you today. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I want you to pray. I want you to say, Lord, just forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for those those choices that I've made. I've gone down the wrong road. But today, I want to commit myself to following you once again. Lord, it's been a hard road. It's been a long road. But today, I come back into your arms. Today, I come back into your house. Today, I want to be a part of your family. Lord, you never stopped being my father, but, but, but Lord, I left your house and I'm coming home. If that's you, I want you to come forward. If that's you, I want you to come forward. Hallelujah. We take these steps of faith. We take these steps of faith. Say, God, you know what? I'm serious about this. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what my neighbor thinks. I don't care what the person sitting next to me thinks. I'm laying down my pride. I'm humbling myself. And I'm saying, Lord, I need you. Hallelujah, Lord. You take a broken You take a weary You make You Yes. 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 Father, we thank you for meeting us here today in a powerful way. You've spoken to hearts. You're changing lives, Lord. You've been working in in hearts right now, Lord, around these altars today. Lord, today we commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to our relationship with you and our relationship with other people. Lord, there's times when it gets messy, Lord. But help us to take those steps to make things right, to bring restoration, because that's your heart, Lord. And no matter what happens, it's restoration. It's restoration. Lord, we thank you. Lord, as we leave this place today and as we are dismissed, Lord, we know that you're not going to leave us. You said you never leave us and you never forsake us. But Lord, as we go, may we be carriers and vessels of your presence. May we be vessels of your love. And as we go out into this community, as we go into our workplace, as we go to our our neighborhoods and our families, Lord, Lord, may we be the the change. And may we we be the ones, Lord, who who shed the love of Christ to those who are around us. Lord, may this be a beginning of a movement, Lord. Lord, no no longer are we content with just building the church. No longer are we content with, with just doing church. But Lord, we want to be the church. And Lord, we'll leave this place and be the church of Jesus Christ, touching lives and touching hearts.
serving others. And Lord, we thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.